Hello everyone, today we're going to build a search input filter in React.js. I hope you learned something new and you enjoyed the video. So let's get started. If you want access to the finished code, then you can head over to my GitHub. The repository is called React.js search input filter and I'm going to leave this link in the description as well. We are going to be using the Black History Month API which I created and the link for this is going to be in the description as well. So I'm just going to copy it for now. And then in my terminal, I have canvassed a new React application and I've just called it search filter. So in order to do this, you would navigate into a folder of your choosing and then you'd say npx uh, create React app and then give this app whatever name that you'd want. I just decided to call mine search filter. And if you try to run npx and it doesn't work, it gives you an error, then try to check whether you have npm installed or rather node.js installed by saying node-v. So once your application finishes canvassing, then all you have to do is just cd into that app. So cd into search filter. And then I'm going to open VS Code, which is my preferred code editor right inside here. Okay. And then inside my terminal, I'm going to run my dev server by saying npm start. Okay, so we're going to perform a bit of cleanup. I'm going to remove these two imports at the top and I'm going to remove this header. And of course, I'm going to move this as well. I'm going to use tailing CSS for the styling just so that I don't have to jump, keep on jumping back and forth between my JS files and my CSS files. So we know that we're going to be fetching data from an API. So we need to import the two hooks that enable us to do that. So use state and use effect. These are coming from React, okay? And remember that I copied a URL, right? The link to my API. So I'm just going to paste that link inside here and I don't have it anymore, so let me grab it. Oh, and this is our React application running, okay? So let me just copy this and paste it inside here, inside some backticks. And then below this, I want to set up my state values and we're going to have uh, probably four state values, but let me just work with three for now. So the first one is going to be people and set people. This is going to be use state and by default it's going to be an empty array because once we fetch the data then we're going to populate this people state value and which will populate the array so the the next one we're going to have a filtered filtered and set filtered this is going to be use state and once again it's going to be an empty array we're going to have a third one called search input so search input and set search input this is going to be use state and it's going to be an empty string. So this is what our input is going to be. And then finally, we're going to have uh, a loading state. So is loading and set is loading. Okay. This is going to be true by default because the loading state is always going to be true until we fetch our data. Okay. So once we have this, then let's go ahead and set up our use effect so that we can actually fetch the data from this API. So I'm going to create the function that is going to fetch the data. So I'm going to say const fetch people. Okay, my bring home for a moment. This is going to be an asynchronous function. Okay, make it an arrow function. And then we're going to say const res equals to await fetch. And we're going to be fetching the URL, which is this right here. Okay, the URL. And then below this, we're going to say const data is going to be await res.json. And then we're just going to say set people into data. Okay, so set people into the data that we get back, which is going to populate this. And then below this, let's call our use effect. So use effect. Okay, set up the callback function. Come on. Like so. And add an empty dependency array so that it only runs on the initial render and then we're just going to call our function inside here called fetch people that we've created okay now below this let's create a section let's add an h1 and i like doing this so i'm just going to say people dot length people i like doing this just to to see whether i'm getting something from the api so let's get this and we see 110 people so that's that's okay now one thing that i want to do is i want to grab this pink color from tailwind colors i forget the hexa value for it so let me just say tailwind css colors let's see this should be it okay so let's grab the i think i used the 700 let me grab that and then let's go inside index.css let's add a background color on the body 
so background color and set it to this and that should reset there we go okay fantastic so let's go back into app.js and let's just structure how we are going to be returning this okay let's just structure it a bit so let's return a section first of all and we can remove this inside this section i'm going to map over my people data so people.map and i know inside here i can destructure the id i can destructure the name and i think known for as well do i need that let me just check let me just check this the id the name date of birth let's just get the date of birth so dob okay and then let's set up my return so once we do that then i want to return an article with the key of id like so and then below this article let's return an h3 that says the name of the person and you know what we need the image as well so let's just have a paragraph first of all and inside here we're going to say date of birth that should be fine so above this let's grab the image the source for this is going to be coming from image which we have not yet destructured the alt in case the image fails to load then i just want to show the name of the person and then let's also have a title attribute that just says the name of the person so let's let's destructure the name uh, sorry the image inside here okay that should be fine so let's save this let's see what we have let's see what we have and there we go so this is what we're going to have now let's tear this out let me go inside this section give this a class name of padding on the x of five and then a grid with grid columns one and a gap of five okay and then let's go somewhere else actually you know what let's just say for medium screens then i want the grid columns to be two grid columns just two for large screens let's say grid columns dash three and then for excel screens then let's have a max width of five xl and then for excel screens let's just say mx auto so that everything goes back to the center and we should have did i say this we should have something oh you know what i ha i don't have tailwind linked yet sorry for that let's go into cdnjs let's just search for tailwind css let's copy this link tag and then let's go inside the public folder and index.html and right above this let's paste this inside and then let's change this title to react.js filter up and save that and now it should reset there we go so we're going to have this now let's tell this image a bit better where we're going to give this a class name of height dash 52 and width dash full which will just uh, make sure uh, this is too small let's say height 96 96 should be fine there we go that is that is much better okay now what i want to do is i want to grab this entire section and place it inside a div okay the reason i'm doing that is because i want this div to have a class name of margin top of 10 actually not let's say margin y of 10 so on the top and bottom of 10 okay so if you go to the bottom i'm also going to have a margin bottom of 10 and i do realize this is a typo don't worry about it okay so let's continue styling this out let's go inside the article give this a class name of bg pink pink dash what was it pink dash 300 okay let's say padding all around five give it a rounded border and a box shadow nice 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 and then let's go inside this h3 give this a class name of font bold and text dash excel should be fine let's say margin top four push away just a bit from the image okay and we're going to have this let's have so, a bit of flag let's say dead of path here there we go eh, that's too long let's say dob i think that would be much better okay and then let's go and uh, let's go ahead and create our search input okay so right above let's go above this okay above this i'm going to have an input with a type of text with a name of text and an id of text with a placeholder text that says such and i've said text too many times okay and then this input is going to have an on change handler and the on change handler is going to take in the synthetic event of e and then place it my inline function and i'm going to create a function called search people search people like so and i'm going to set this into e dot target dot value which will just get me whatever is that inside the input so let's go ahead and create this search people uh, function 
let's go right above let's go below the use effect and i'm going to say const search people okay and then this is going to take in a search value parameter like so and then right below this we're going to say set search input so this search input okay we're going to say set search input into search value okay and what that does basically is that it binds this it, it binds it into the input so every time that we type inside the input then it's, it's also going to change our state value right there and then below this let's have an if statement that says if such value so if it exists right sorry not such value sorry if such input if this exists right meaning if it's not an empty uh, string then we want to say we want to create another function here called filtered such okay and this filtered search is going to say people dot filter okay and for every person right then we want to return object dot values and we're returning the person like so dot join okay and then two lowercase like so i'm just typing it out and then i'm going to explain it and then dot includes includes such value dot to lowercase like so so this is our filter our filtering function right here and what it does is that it compares the text that you have typed in whether it matches the text that is on the web page right and we're just going to see this in action in a few moments below this okay right here we're going to say set filtered into the filtered search function which i've just created so filtered such like so and set filtered this is not the spelling set filtered is coming from this right here okay so remember it's an empty array so this is going to populate the array now we're going to also have an else statement here we are going to say set filtered back into uh, what's our state value back into people so what we're saying here is that if there's a such input if there's text inside our input then check whether it matches any of the text on the web page and if it does then return whatever it matches and if it doesn't then return everything this is what this does right here okay so this should be working correctly or almost rather and we're going to need to refactor a few things so let me just save this so that it formats it okay that's looking nice we're going to need to refactor just a bit because now even though this function is working uh, it's still technically not showing anything right when we when we filter to, through it and i've just remembered that let me add auto complete off auto complete set this to off because sometimes it annoys me i don't like the drop down okay so let's just style this out so that it goes to the center let's style up this input give this a class name of width dash half and then let's set the block and mx auto adding on the y of two padding on the x of four make it rounded with a slight box shadow okay we have that let's say margin bottom of 10 push it away from this looking fantastic let's have a title about this and each one that says search input filter right there let's style it out give this a class name of text white uppercase font bold text 2xl for medium screens, let's increase the text to 4XL. For large screens, let's say text 6XL. And that should be fine. So let's see. Fantastic. And I should have said text center. And margin bottom of 10 pushed away from the input. And we're going to have that. Fantastic. Now, what we need to do is we need to place a conditional. And what I'm going to do is this entire section, right? Okay. So let me just check this out. Right. This section right here should be fine okay so i'm going to cut this out okay i'm going to cut this out and then i'm going to place a conditional and say if filtered sorry not filtered but if such input dot length is greater than one meaning it, 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 we have more than one item that is typed in if this is true okay so whether this is true then i just want to paste this in and then i need to change this into filtered dot map so that it returns the filtered items instead of the entire items and then right here i'm going to place my full colon and then paste it again and this should be correct 
I hope this works. So let's test it out. Let's just see. There we go. Look at that. So we we are success, successfully filtering. We can search for Nelson Mandela. We can search for Kenneth Kaunda. They're all there. We can search for Malcolm X. There we go. And so on and so forth. So that is just a simple way that you can add a search input filter. And I do realize this is uh, the UI is a bit different, but you know, it's the functionality that we want. Okay, so after I had finished recording, I realized that I didn't add in the loading set, even though I already have it. So let's do that. Let's just grab all of this. So this entire div all the way to the bottom, cut it out. And then I'm going to say, if is loading is true, then we want to return an H1 that says loading dot dot dot. And then if it is not true, then I'm just going to paste this in. Okay. And just to test this out, actually, you know what, let me style this out and I can just grab this in entire classes right here give this a class name of paste this in okay and then i can also say flex and item center and justify center and h screen so that it goes all the way to the center okay so let's save this let's save this and let's see whether that would work and there we go so we have our loading set right here so we need to change this loading we need to change this back to false once we have fetched our data so obviously the right thing to do would be to go right inside here and say set is loading to false so let's see that look at that we have our loading state and then we fetch the data so that is looking amazing and that is going to be it for the video if you enjoyed the video please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're not already and i will see you in the next video Bye bye